Well, cool. So in this case, I have 4 and negative square root of 5. And remember, when we're talking about our roots, we have to apply, especially when we have a, the square root of a, of a number that's going to produce an irrational number, um, we have to produce the, the conjugate of that form. So therefore, if I have negative square root of 5, we got to this by taking the square root of 5. So we have to include the negative and the positive version of the square root of 5. Right? We have to make sure we com complete that conjugate. Now, Again, when writing our polynomial, these are the zeros. So I can write them as x equals 4, x equals negative 5, or x equals the square root of negative 5, and x equals the square root of 5. Then going from zeros, so these are what we call our zeros. I don't know what that's supposed to be. Zeros. Now, those are the zeros written as x equals, right? Because when we took a polynomial and found the zeros, that was our final answer would look like that. Now we need to write them as our factors. So to do that, we need to set them equal to 0. And remember, we got them to be our factors by applying the 0 product property. All right, so therefore I have x minus 4 equals 0, x plus the square root of 5 equals 0, and x minus the square root of 5 equals 0. Well, remember how we got them set equal to 0 was we applied the 0 product property, meaning we broke up the product that equaled 0 to each one of these terms to equal 0. So therefore, I can write these as x minus 4 times x plus the square root of 5 times x minus the square root of 5 equals 0. And these are what we call our factors. So now we have our polynomial in linear factor form, but we want to write it as a standard form of a polynomial. So therefore, I'm going to have to multiply this all out. Now, Sometimes I like to say, you know, work left from right. Um, but in this case, we see that when we have a, a factor multiplied by its conjugate, that's going to be actually pretty basic, um, pretty easy for us to be able to multiply this out because we know that this is going to be using a difference of two squares. So if I was going to multiply this one out first, I'll still have x minus 4. And then by multiplying this out, since this is a difference of two squares, I know I only need to multiply the first two terms and the last two terms because uh, my middle terms are going to add up to 0. So therefore, I'll get an x squared. And then the square root of 5 times the square root of negative 5 is going to be the negative square root of 25. Well, we know the square root of 25 is just going to be 5. OK. Now I need to multiply these out. And I can just apply you know, the FOIL method. You could use the box method, really anything you want to. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. This still equals 0. All right, so by multiplying this out, I now get x cubed minus 5x squared minus 4x squared plus 20 equals 0. Now, I notice that I can combine these two terms. So I have a final answer of x cubed minus 9x squared plus 20 equals 0. However, ladies and gentlemen, we're not trying to write our polynomial equal to 0. We want to find it, write it as a function. So we only set it equal to 0 to find the zeros. So I'll say f of x equals x cubed minus 9x squared plus 20 as our final polynomial function. Thanks.